grab you know, salt go to Gitri or, or check out SDN and, and change everything. We want to open uh, this kind of collaboration model for a larger group of people. We want to get those those people that have great ideas and to make it very easy for them to, to implement their ideas and, and to enhance and improve the user experience with their ideas. So that, um, again, includes a lot of bringing web technologies onto the desktop. And of course, we want to bring your data together. Um, we want to, to be able to connect uh, the data to, to disconnect it from certain applications. We want to um, make it possible to interact with the data online, to, um, to create connections between uh, your data and between other um, concepts like, like people you're interacting with. So this is the, um, the vague stuff. I'll be um, going more into, into details now. So one of the um, one of the things when we uh, looked at our email clients uh, is that, that they're slow. Um, their user interface is really the larger the screen becomes, uh, the better. And there are a couple of, of uh, problems we we ran into. Like they're not fast enough for the usual use case of um, I have email folders with sixty thousand emails, and that should I mean just work. But also uh, people are sometimes sending DVD images uh, around by email and current email clients with synchronous access uh, tend to not be really happy about that. So we created uh, Akonadi, which is a centralized um, cache for, uh, for personal information. Um, see it as a, as a hub that is able to pull in uh, data from different data sources, be it uh, email server, group web server, um, calendaring uh, things. And again, and, and provide this data as a service uh, to applications, so you can build very thin um, user interfaces on top of uh, Akunadi. We want this to be as universal as possible, and we realize that not everybody will be happy to drag in uh, a KDE lips dependency, so we, we kept it free of, uh, of any KDE dependency. As I said, it's for uh, high volume, high performance, and we really like to see this um, this technology. Um, also adopted by uh, by other projects. Then I already talked about um, connecting your data, making sense of your data. Um, we looked at the, this whole problem space of uh, desktop search and desktop indexing, and we think it, it, it's not bad, but it's also not enough to translate um, uh, data ones and zeros into something that really makes sense to the user. Uh, so we created a, a semantic layer uh, that, that goes on top of your data. This is uh, still very much work in process. Um, Nipomoc is a store that can help you with your uh, desktop search needs, but it can also um, uh, do tagging, thereby classifying uh, data. Uh, we can rate uh, data, and thereby, again, making um, finding the right, um, the right data in your large amount of, of data on your hard disk to make it easier. And uh, we want to provide connections between those data. There's been a lot of talk about the semantic uh, web, and I'm not sure if, if it has really been uh, flying. What we want to do is create a semantic desktop so you don't interact um, with uh, a VCF file or um, with a group web server, but you interact with an abstract concept of people that can then um, have their information stored in a uh, Google server and you'll be able to interact with them through IM or through email. But this should all be um, centralized uh, around concepts that um, that normal people, like not us, actually understand. One of the, um, the big new UI technologies we've been introducing is uh, Plasma. And Plasma's um, basic concepts are Plasma is the, is the desktop shell in KD4. That's an implementation of Plasma. Um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to free the, the desktop from being uh, just a dumping ground uh, for files. We want to make it really useful. And uh, that means turning those, those file icons um, and you can have on my desktop into first class objects. Um, having, um, again, representations that are much closer to the mental model uh, people have and interact with those rather than uh, with files that have extensions and are generally uh, quite technical for uh, for normal people. And 
Um, I, I said that we want to bring creators and, and consumers closer together, and that means um, that, for example, designer and uh, and developers should be able. That there are very little people that are both good designers and uh, good developers, and we don't want bad designers and bad developers to do our stuff. So we need to um, cater to both groups, make it easy to to do design and not to, not care a lot about your data, and um, at the same time make it uh, easy to, to get at your data in a very, uh, very efficient uh, way, but not, not care so much about uh, design. So we, um, <coughs> we tend to, to, to keep uh, visualization and application logic uh, apart from each other. Um, big things of uh, Plasma is uh, the mobility. It should be easy to brand for, uh, for a product. We want to, um, you know, to provide our products that still make it easy to um, to give your, your own touch, to give your own part of the experience uh, to it. Should be scriptable, as I said, we, we want to make it easy for um, also those those few people that are not able to write C++ code to also contribute um, uh, to the desktop. And <clears throat> we want to be able to reuse uh, all the stuff. Um, so we, uh, we're creating a reusable set of um, of widgets, of, of applets that uh, can live on the desktop. Um, this is this is a bit what what Plasma can be. Um, it does not only load. Um, there's a, the concept of a native Plasma widget, which uh, uses Plasma streaming capabilities and can be written in different uh, languages, uh, such as C++, JavaScript. Python, Ruby, um, but it can also be just a bit of web content. We uh, use a web kit widget and uh, toss that around on the desktop. But we can also uh, load dashboard widgets uh, directly into Plasma and um, so tap into a much larger uh, group of, of existing mini applications. Uh, same with uh, Google Get, um, Edge content, with, which is the uh, format that Enlightenment uh, 17 uh, is using. As I said, portability is a big thing. Um, uh, Plasma uh, runs on Windows, on Mac OS, on Linux, BSD, Solaris, and also different uh, uh, process architectures, um, including ARM, which is uh, fairly interesting for um, for a lot of smaller devices. Um, the Plasma desktop, the thing with the panel and, um, and the menu uh, bottom left, is the first uh, shell we implemented with Plasma, the first uh, actual user interface. Um, we're currently working on, uh, on a couple of uh, other shells, so we want to use the same technology, for example, uh, for a network, but create a specialized uh, user interface for such a device. Um, more confined screen, um, you probably want to do different things on a network. And uh, we're also working on a media center. Um, so, for example, when you, when you choose to uh, connect uh, your computer to a TV or you have a, a, media, uh, a media center PC, then, again, the, the interaction model, um, the input devices, the screen, uh, those are completely different. So we want to have a specialized UI uh, for that. Um, there's actually a sum of code project which uh, is progressing pretty well to create a set of, um, of multimedia centered uh, widgets um, to use for Plasma. That's not interesting yet. So um, this is uh, the part where I um, started interacting with, uh, with it. I said that um, it's a lot about first class objects. And um, here's for, uh, for example an, an image that uh, you are uh, that I've uh, on my desktop, and I can uh, interact it, uh, with it in, in different ways, can make it smaller, um, and even turn it around, which um, is actually quite useful when you uh, when you have a tablet and you want to show it to someone else, and you uh, just turn it around. Um, widgets can uh, live either on the desktop, which is um, just a free space where you uh, can do lots of things, but they can, for example, also live in this panel. So to explain, every, everything uh, you see right now is a plasma widget, not the most reservation you, uh, but everything else is. The difference is where those widgets are living, so they, um, they are dealing with a, a set of constraints. For 
for example, uh, this, this beautiful Indian girl uh, here, um, she doesn't experience any constraints. She can grow bigger, grow smaller. Um, the widgets in the panel, however, they, uh, they know that they can possibly uh, grow uh, horizontally, uh, but there's a hard limit in, in terms of uh, growing vertically. So if I, for example, uh, change the, um, the size of the panel, those widgets will adapt uh, to that. And as I said, widgets can, can live both Oh, yeah. Can you put it on the top page? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, if this crashes, this is a random SVN snapshot. Uh, what are we working on fixing those guys? Um, so this is uh, um, better visible. Let's move this that way. So, um, the widgets. Um, above here, live in a constrained uh, space, and for example, when I move uh, the panel to the, uh, to the left, those widgets get a signal, okay, now your constraints have changed, uh, you can uh, grow in that direction, but not anymore uh, in this direction. Um, constraints we are, uh, we are currently uh, using is the planar, uh, where you can grow in both directions, a horizontal, a vertical, those are the panel cases. We also uh, have a, a media center case, I can say you want to be really big, but you don't want to uh, show a lot of information. And this might sound weird, but uh, for example here is uh, something I'm working on. Um, it is integration of email. Uh, here I'm using uh, the, the Akinadi um, uh, PIM store to, to have a view of an icon uh, in Plasma. And when I grow it, you see that, that more and more uh, information is being, uh, is being revealed. So um, the widget has a concept of how, how big am I and uh, how much information uh, should, I, uh, should I show at the same time. And when I make it bigger, then it will sometimes say, okay, now I didn't even have enough space to render the full email body. And at that point, um, it actually, only then it, it says, you know, okay, and now we'd like to not only show the header, but the whole email, and then it goes like, please give me the whole body, loads the whole body, and, and renders that as well. Um, the idea is that you can uh, use, for example, uh, uh, drag and drop here. So for example, if I have a, um, an email uh, list, I can uh, uh, toss around these things on my desktop in that way, create new, um, uh, create new objects on the desktop. Uh, let's see. Right. Okay, thanks. Um, so we wanted to get, get rid of the file, uh, the, the desktop as a uh, dumping ground uh, only for files, but we realized that some people really want to do that. So uh, Photo View is, uh, is another Plasma widget which uh, gives a view of the file system on your desktop. Um, also Photo View can uh, either live on the desktop or on the panel, so I just drag it into the panel. Seems okay, now I'm, I'm again constrained, so I need to find a different way uh, to visualize myself. And now when I click on it, I, I actually get, um, uh, get it all the information. The interesting thing is, so, uh, putting it uh, on the desktop. And something cool we, uh, we implemented for uh, KDE 4.3 is um, that um, you can hover uh, over folders and that will uh, open them so that makes it much, much easier uh, to, um, you know, to get at, uh, at your files. It's, it's a bit the idea of a spatial uh, file manager. So it, uh, again, it's very easy to, to interact with your files. Um, something I'm, uh, uh, I've also been working on is uh, making drag, drag and drop easier. So, this is the um, demo effect probably. So see, I, I can just uh, drop a file onto my desktop and uh, check, okay, uh, what can I do with this? And it shows the, the uh, file as a picture. 
or in this case, I'm just uh, dragging a forward onto it. It says, okay, I want, uh, to be, I want this to be uh, a folder view. So this is the, the bit of the idea of creating first class objects on the desktop, and um, this uh, something we're, we're working on, making this also work with, uh, with remote uh, objects. Um, in part, that uh, actually already works uh, quite well. So let me uh, pull up the configuration for uh, this folder, and then say I want to um, I want to edit my website, which is uh, on a web server, and um, I can use SSH to uh, edit those files. Then I'll uh, just specify an SSH host and hope that the network is up, and it um, it shows a view of the files on my server, and I can. Uh, interact with uh, with the files on uh, on its server in pretty much uh, the same way as um, as if they were uh, local files. Right. Should I stop? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I gotta stop. <laughs>